Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 10 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. Quick bit of housekeeping, I did upgrade to Unity 5.4, so you're going to notice my hierarchy looks a little bit different. Um, it shouldn't really impact anything else in this video series. It's gonna, If you haven't upgraded, it'll basically work the exact same way. You're just going to notice there's kind of an icon because of Unity's new multi-scene um, support situation, but we're going to be acting as if nothing has changed. So today we're going to focus on our character's grounding. And what I mean by this is being able to tell when our character is standing on a surface versus being up in the air. The reason for this, I'm going to hit play and kind of show you, is that we've got our character set up so that we can jump with them, and that works fine, but if I keep on hitting jump, you'll notice that I keep on, you'll see in the scene view here, I keep on moving up and up and up and up. And that's because we're never checking, the only thing we're checking for is, is the jump button being pressed? We never actually bother to check, hey, are you standing on the ground? Now there are situations where you might have like an air jump or a double jump, things like that, but for the, for the time being, until we want to implement a feature like that, we should probably have it set up that, unless you're standing on the ground, hitting the jump button doesn't really do anything. So in order to do that, we're going to make a couple of updates to our controller script and our walking controller script. Let's jump over to Mono Develop, and you'll remember from one of our previous videos, we did require there be a collider on our controller because we know if there's a controller walking around our scene of any type, it's going to need a collider. I'm going to add in here, though, I'm going to add an actual um, concrete reference to this collider in addition to requiring the component. So I'm going to add in here, I'm going to say protected, protected collider. I'm just going to call it C-O-L-L -L for short. And remember, protected means that our walking controller will be able to access it, but anything outside of the um, controller inheritance structure will, won't be able to access it. And then I'm going to say call equals get component collider inside of our awake function. So now we're going to have access to both of these, um, the rigid body and the collider, when we start our game. With that in place, we can move over to the walking controller. And here we're going to put in a couple of things. So basically what we want to say here is when we are pressing the jump button and adding this jump speed, we need to check one more thing. We're gonna, I'm going to actually highlight this, and if you right click in Mono Develop and go Surround With, you can choose from a number of different options here, but we're going to just go with the if statement. I'll be honest, 99, I don't think I've ever actually done Surround without using an if statement, but I'm sure there are situations where you're going to do other things. Um, and in here, instead of if true, we're going to want to check if we are grounded. So right here we're check if grounded. Obviously that's not going to work because we can't have a comment. So I'm going to actually create a method called grounded, or I'm going to call a method called grounded right here. But now in order for that to work I need to create it. So down here we're going to say, oh, not there. I want this down here. We're going to say void, or not void, sorry, we're going to return a bool and we're going to call this grounded, and it's going to take no parameters. And so what this, this is a method that will look below our character and see if there is a collider. In order to do this, we need we need some sort of way of basically looking down below our character. And Unity has a very convenient way to do this. In fact, it's one that will return a bool for us. And it'll say, it'll look down and say, oh, they're, hey, true, there's something there, or false, nothing's there. And that is physics.raycast. And you'll see here as I'm starting to type it in and as it pre-populates, physics.raycast is a static function that returns a bool, and that bool is, like I say, saying true, something's there, or false, nothing's there. So that's exactly what we want. So we'll hit enter, raycast. You also notice there's 16 different types of raycast um, 
parameters we can put in. The one we're going to go for, we'll see down here, there's a few that are you can actually put in if you already have array existing for some reason, you can put that in. But we're going to go mm -hmm. with this one here where we kind of manually put in. We're going to put in the point where it should start, we're going to give it a direction that it should point in, and then we're going to give it a specific distance to look because we don't want this thing looking on forever and ever. We just want to know basically right at its foot level with maybe a little bit of give for in case there's an error um, or there's like some, you know, movement to the floor. Um, that's how far it should look for there to be a floor underneath our character. So the first one, the origin, is actually just going to be the position of our character. So we're going to say transform.position. So basically the dead center of our character is where this ray is going to start. Direction, likewise, is just going to be straight down. So we can say vector3 dot down. The distance that we want this ray cast to look is a little bit more complicated. Um, we basically are we're talking now about this is why we put in that collider uh, reference because it's going to be based on the collider this is starting at the center of our character and we're going to want this to go all the way down to the very bottom of the collider fortunately there's a very convenient uh, variable to look for for this which is the collider has a um, has a bit of information attached to it called its bounds. Oops, not call either. Call, that's what we shortened it to, has this information called bounds, which is basically the highest point, lowest point, leftmost point, rightmost point, etc., the containment of our collider. In a box collider, it's literally the exact same thing as it. In like a sphere collider or a capsule collider, it's actually more of the box that would fit that um, particular collider, but um, it's going to do the same thing for us right now. So we're going to say bounds, but then within there, there's this thing called extents, which basically says from the center, how far up does this bounds go? How far down does this bounds go? So if we do the extents dot y, that gives us exactly the distance we want, which is from the center to the either top or the bottom. Um, of the bounds. So that gives us the exact distance we want for this to um, get to the foot of our character because we're going down. So it's going from the center of our character down all the way to the very bottom of the collider. And in addition to that we're going to add, I'm just going to put in 0.1 for right now as just kind of a um, distance to handle like a margin of error if you will. And so all of this now will look at the um, look at the character, look directly below it, and say, is there something there? And it's going to return that bool for us. So all we have to do is return exactly what this is going to return. So we're just going to say, return the result of this raycast. So now when we're checking if grounded, our character knows, look right below me, is something there? If it is something there, at this point we know we are pressing our jump button, we have just started pressing our jump button, we are on the ground, so now we're going to jump. It's a very conditional statement there. With all that in place, we should now be able to jump back to our scene, start the game, and we'll see here now, if I press jump normally, still works as normal, but if I press jump and then keep on hitting jump, 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 I only jump when I'm on the ground. Now there is a little bit of a problem still with this solution, which is that if I move, say, over to this edge here, I can't jump. I'm pressing the jump button, but nothing is happening. And that is because the way that we're looking to see if we're grounded right now, we are only looking from the very dead center of the cube to see, you know, from our character to see if there's something right there. So if you're standing on the edge like this right now, it's the the ray cast is kind of looking down this direction and it doesn't see anything under it even though clearly there's this edge that's under it. In order to solve this, um, we'd really just need to do more ray casts and check, you know, 
maybe the corners, maybe even do a grid of like about nine different ray casts so that we're, in case we're walking on a thin pole or something, we're not missing anything. Um, I'll probably do a kind of an appendix video to this series about creating that more robust um, grounding system. But for right now, this really gives us the basic idea of what we want when we are um, checking the ground and when we're jumping. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.